Welcome everybody. It's Tuesday night. That means it's modern here at Game Swap Mason. We're jun jumping right in. Kyle Kepi right on in. Kyle Kepi on your left playing a Jun deck. Billy Caminos on your right playing. Is this is he playing his classic Hoken deck? Uh, it's probably something with Life from the Loam. Huge fan of Life from the Loam, Bill Caminos. Uh, I can't blame him. We have a Marsh Flats into a overgrown tomb to lead him off, so that doesn't give us a ton of information. Loam Dredge. Looks like Bill was on the play. There we go. Alright, let's see what uh, Kyle can come up with on turn two. Weird for Jun to keep one without turn one discard. Especially when you know you're playing against Billy who's playing some dirty nonsense. Yeah, so we often, uh, or at least when I'm playing against Jun, I think of it as the answers deck. Um, okay. And everybody else is the questions deck. So what does Jun have here if, uh, if Billy just wants to sit around and do things like activate the Soliana repeatedly and dredge cards back? What's the plan? Uh, we want to get rid of that Liliana as quickly as possible. Pronto. Uh, looks like he's got the bolt in hand to take care of that if he were to so desire. Yeah, he's got some options. And then you want to really pressure the life total here. Like That's the biggest part of the game plan. Okay. <clears throat> you can't let Billy just do whatever Billy wants. more salvage from Billy into the smallpox. Oh, now this is going to make everybody sacrifice a creature, lose a life, and discard a card. Oh, a land as well. It really filled Bill's graveyard. We got a life from loam and a Dakmore salvage in the in the graveyard. Yep. You went way ahead on that exchange. Those pox are not big. It was big there. Sure. Alright, so we've got a 2 2 Grim Flare. I think the coolest part about this, this loam deck is you get to play all these cool lands. You got a Vault of the Archangels now in Billy's hand. Yeah, Vault's a real good card with Lingering Souls. Nameless Inversion, your Grim Flayer. So this definitely lets me know that he has Hoken in this deck. Oh, sure. Hoken's are rare that let you bring back night cards. Correct. So, lets you cast night cards from your graveyard. Right. And so Nameless Inversion being all creature types matters quite a bit. There it is. Hoken the Broken. Hoken the Broken. So if he gets this guy uh, into play, it's... Uh, it's very hard to make things stick. Now we're in the dirtily stage of Billy's deck. Where we're content just playing a land for turn. Oh, we've got the knight to back it up, though. Oh, man. Of the reliquary. And he, uh... <laughs> Stupid card has been discarded. Serious shortcutting there, so he searched up his land, then played the knight, but but didn't didn't wait to do all the things at once. Or I think they know this match is going to go long. We're going to see a lot of magic played here, um, and so they're willing to. Is that a Raven's crime to the bin? That's a Raven's crime to the bin. Oh, Not that's do exciting! Any here, but that is exciting. I think the thing Billy would love to see here is a a Manland go to the bin. Uh, Manland is good. Hoken's good. Like, he wants some way to be able to pressure this Liliana, because even though Billy can go real long, if this Liliana ultimates, it's not good for him. It's going to blow up three lands. Right. Life oh, from the Loam is a tremendous card advantage, but at some point, like, you're just drawing, getting lands off of it. You don't have any more gas.
So eventually here, Ghost Quarter becomes Wasteland because Kyle's probably... I think the Jundex max out at like four, maybe five basics. Um, five would just be a tremendous number for them to play. Sure, I think in this particular build, they usually play one forest and two swamps. Okay, so um, he could really eliminate the uh, the red mana altogether. Absolutely. With these ghost quarters. It looks like he's done that. Yeah, there's no red mana available. I think I think that makes Billy believe the coast is clear. Yeah. That oh, could man. be his last one. Um, I do see some lists that run the double forest. Oh, no. That's it. He's uh -oh. only one of the two basics. Oh, That's he not... sacrificed one to the... Uh... Oh, yeah. He either discarded it to Lillian or sacrificed it to the smallpox. I forget. And there's the Manland of the Graveyard. As well as... I believe that's a Vengeful Pharaoh in the yard. Now, that one I would definitely definitely have to pick up and, and uh, educate myself on. Oh, and he's got the Life from the Loam in there, too. Uh, so, Vengeful Pharaoh, as you can see on the screen, works in your graveyard, uh, destroys an attacking creature whenever it deals damage. Then put Vengeful Fair on top of your library. This right. guy's got the potential to kill quite a few dudes. There's a red source. Let's see if Billy just axes yeah, it's it not, now. It's not long for this world. So how do you feel about the line of minusing the Liliana... Oh, we went nuts. I was just going to have him sack a creature, and then you get parody. Mm -hmm. With the spirit coming in and the Liliana going up by one. Sure. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, I think you're still falling behind on that, because making Billy discard isn't really doing you a whole lot of good. Yep. And here comes back life from the loam. Because if he has a green source here in his hand, which I, he probably does. Yeah, you got to think. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Yeah, because if you have a green source, you just get to cast life from the loam. Grimflare being a 4-4 four, four is a pretty big deal here. Like, it's just going to well, die. Well, Fair is going to get it. A, get sure. that one, too. One. But you get it set to the top of your deck, and he can't block it and stop all the damage. I don't know. I don't know how uh, why Billy keeps getting these life loans. I think he has to draw a. Um, He's got a fetch land in his hand. Yeah, I would have been on playing the green source and starting to get back. You know, my land just hit my land drop every turn. Uh, he's got whatever type I want. Like five lands in hand. I don't think he's worried about that. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think Kyle has a series of draws that get him out of this. Um, he could draw the new Liliana, which is great against the spirits. Mm-hmm. And there's not a real answer. There's a man land. Well, certainly. You just plus it. You get to attack. You know what I mean? Like you have plenty of answers for man land. You just have to have them both. Sure. Yeah, it was a long way to long way to go to get that one back. Yeah, and we don't even know if he's playing the new Liliana. That's kind of a niche card still. I think he was on a three and one last time I spoke with him. That um, seems pretty standard nowadays. Kyle just top eighted a very interesting tournament that that's kind of gaining traction here in Cincinnati. The twenty five dollar vintage tournament. 
Oh, yeah? Yeah, they're having one here at uh, GameSwap Mason on Sunday. I wouldn't know about that. You wouldn't know anything about that? I wouldn't know anything about that. Neither would I. I'm going Grand to Grand Prix Atlanta. Atlanta <laughs> sponsored Grand by Star City Games this weekend. So in between rounds of watching Grand Prix Atlanta, sponsored by Star City Games, you can pop on over to Top Deck Productions and uh, watch this $25 vintage tournament. Absolutely. The, the format is you get to play vintage, but you can only spend $25 TCG mid on your deck. So what you want to do if you're going to build for this format, you want to go to mtggoldfish.com. And uh, in, in there they have a deck builder tool once you sign up for their, their website that you can plug your deck list into the thing and it will pull up TCG mid on it. Right. Um, and it's real interesting, man. I mean, a lot of cards that you think are, are not reasonable are completely, you know, under three bucks and don't really break the bank. Like, Tinker's a playable card. Sure. Soul Ring. Uh, I mean, you can get a whole play set of mental missteps in there for less than three dollars. Less than three for a whole playset? Yeah, I think that might be reaching. I they're think, like I thought they were like a buck, close to a dollar. No, they're like eighty cents or something. Eighty cents a dollar. Yeah, so just a, less than four dollars. Okay. But you get a whole playset, and I think that card's important. It's really interesting uh, to to explore that format. Any new format's going to be interesting to explore for the first little bit. You just got to worry about this format. Like, this format can never be a big format because all of the cards that get good would increase the cost and then they wouldn't be legal anymore. And yeah, it's got, it's like it's its own banned and restricted list. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, what, uh, what... Kaladesh cards you think we're going to see in uh, Modern tonight? In Modern what are you on tonight? the hunt for? I would like to see... I don't know. I, I've been curious as to how Smuggler's Copter would do. Um, obviously, in a format with Bolt, it's less good. Right. But, like, the looting is extremely relevant. Concur. Um, I think the card most likely to see play is the white-black Fastland. Sure. Sure. Yeah, the Fastland's had a lot of texture. The, uh, the blue red one really improves any kind of you know those young pyro delver style decks. Sure, and the green black one, if we have any Abzan players here, it really opens up the uh, Abzan match. Lets you play your discard or your noble hierarch on turn one, which is something they've desperately wanted. Mm-hmm. Other than that, I'm not sure. I'm I'd be pleasantly surprised to see anything really. Yeah, I think, P like, uh, Pia and Kira Nalar was a big like, go-long one in the uh, Grixis decks. Right. I think Pia would be a cool one to, to you know, supplement that, like, play one and one. Uh, but, yeah, you could do any number of things. We're on a mold of six for Kyle. He might be digging for some interaction. Do like they play any straight, like, graveyard removal, like, remove your graveyard from... Yeah, there's... So there's... Jun deck uh, sideboards are always pretty weird. Um, he might have like a Jun charm or a Nile spell bomb. Oh yeah, Nile spell bomb would be huge here. Sure. The that um, the decks with Grim Flayer typically run Nile spell bomb, just to get that artifact in their yard. Yeah, so Billy could be in trouble here because I I didn't even consider this at first, but I, uh, a, a controlling dredge deck like this spends a lot more time with its you know, playing the game. Right. So you give the deck that your opponent more opportunities to draw the hate cards. Right. Which is very unlike the more aggro dredge decks that we've seen in the past couple weeks from modern. Sure. Well I mean this one has the Grim Flayers, which is pretty aggressive. Uh, but it also aggressively digs for that hate. Yeah, I'm just saying Billy's deck is not going to end the game fast enough. You're going to get a chance to Nile Spellbomb him or oh, something of that nature. Yeah, that's for You have for more sure. draw steps and therefore more chances. We like chances. And Nameless Inversion. Love that card. I think it's a cool interaction. 
It's a very good card for his deck. Bill's really got a damnation in hand. He's got the whole damnation, huh? Yep. All right, so let's see what kind of action Kyla can put up here. He's going to need to generate some sort of... Uh... So you think his removal or his uh, discard came out? Hard to say. I wouldn't think so. Like, I think you want some amount of targeted discard in there still. Sure. But your targeted removal is just so bad in this matchup. Right. Terminate doesn't play a big role or anything like that, so you just want to... You want some number of it in for, like, Knights of the Reliquary that just get out of hand. Right. But it really depends on how many cards you had to bring in. This, you know, any kind of graveyard deck is pretty niche. Like, you don't want to... You don't want to have, like, six slots hating the graveyard. Sure. You really I only mean, need to take out like, two cards. I'd imagine he has, like, three or four. Okay. And, like, if he plays Dreadborn in the main, that's an easy one to take out. Sure. Um, Picked up some of those this, this weekend. I got a, got a good deal on them. It's one of those cards. I think it's going to go up as, as more Planeswalkers get printed. Sure. Obviously, like, this new Liliana is uh, very, very powerful. Seeing playing Modern almost immediately. Absolutely. I think that only can go up. Concur. Ooh. That's big. Not having the Nameless Inversion here. And go. I guess he still has Ghost Quarter that he can find. Right. Yeah, I guess, and he's going to probably loan pretty aggressively. There it is. What we got here? Is this a knight? Yep. Good Likely knight. knight. Oh, we got a thinker. I don't know if he has anything in hand he wants to discard. Then the smallpox might be better to precede the knight. But it does not look like that's the case. I think I think ghost quartering the land here is gonna ooh, during the main phase. How many creature or lands in the yard is that now? Two? For Kyle? No, for Billy. I think he's got... I think there's a fetch land and a ghost quarter in there. Okay. Yeah, it's risky on his turn, uh, because if he has a mountain, well, I guess he knows he doesn't have a mountain from last game. He could have just bolted the knight if he had less than two, but... Right, well, you don't want to... You, you don't want to bolt the knight because... If he has the ghost quarter in play, he can just sack it immediately. Oh, absolutely, yeah. There's the terminate for the knight that you spoke of. Premeditated that that play. Kyle's got his own ghost quarter now, which only looks somewhat embarrassing in this matchup. <laughs> I mean, he could blow up a uh, man land, I guess. But. Yeah, it, it could be relevant during combat to get a man land out of the way. Um, just at the end of the game, you think you know get the vault of the archangels. If you think he doesn't have any any basics left, sure. You know, just on an, an appropriate turn. Billy's down to thirteen. It's a big five coster. Playing out our eventual Vero. <laughs> yeah, man. Just getting it out there. Yep. This guy's going to catch a removal spell. I don't know if you want him to. He's certainly not better in play than he is in the graveyard. Especially Kyle's hand is pulse, pulse, bolt. And so you're definitely going to pulse it versus standing there and taking four to the teeth every turn. I would have probably taken four to the teeth at least once. Just couldn't disagree more. Billy's not really putting you on much of a clock. If he's putting f four right in your grill, he is. Sure, but like you have the double. But the thing pulse. is, if he mouse from pulses it now, he doesn't have any pressure to apply, so Billy's not going to get it back anytime soon. Right. 
So he's just saving himself infinite damage. Like, he's going to literally take four every turn until he either kills it or draws a creature. Absolutely. So why not just do it, get it out of the way? Because um, drawing a creature, drawing any creature that's power five or less, or any creature at all, you you, you block and it dies. Sure, if you're Hopefully it trades. It. So Billy's at ten right now. If, um, I was going to say, he's got the bolt in hand. If he draws, like, any type of other burn, it puts Billy into a pretty precarious situation. But we just fired that bolt off on the shambling vent. Is that a... Is that a ley line of the void right there on top I of it? I think or that's a ley line of the void, yeah. All right. Is either that or languish, and I was like, oh, no way, no way it's languish. And smallpox is pretty anemic right now. Leyline of the Void is discarded. Everybody goes, goes to a lower life total, I guess. I guess the smallpox got the card in Kyle's hand. Right, I think that's what he's worried about. This whole game turns around if Kyle top decks Nile Spellbomb or Tormod's Crypt or Absolutely. Feldon's Cane. <laughs> I don't think he's got a Feldon's Cane. Is that even legal in modern? No, it's not. Yeah, I didn't think I so. I was just I was going deep for the laugh here. I thought it was getting pretty dry. Fair enough. This is a dry matchup. There's a Feldon's Cane. Oh, it is legal. It's time shifted. There it is. Man, I pulled out all the legal cards. Big shout outs to Jake Valentine. You can hear him calling modern sometimes. But he's running the running the technicals for us tonight. Showing you Feldon's cane. Stomping and, ground. And down. other interesting magic cards. That was, a good one. that was a big one back in like like you play nineteen ninety four, ninety five magic. Feldon's cane critical. Is it critical? Interesting. Billy with the triple ghost quarter hand. I think he's content to just grind out Kevin's or uh, Kyle's lands here. I'm surprised Billy doesn't play something like Explore. I feel like this deck would just go nuts on Explore. Like, Explore, the draw dredges back my life from the loam, play life from the loam, play my land for the turn, play my additional land. Okay. Explorer is certainly an interesting one. Oh, the Stinkweed Imp. Four, five, five. Okay, there it is. Four, five. I miscounted. And the big stinks in play. Oh, we're going to take them all the way off of green. Oh man, we hit. All right, so we've got a seven-eight goif. So removal spell here is huge. Yup. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, playing into Billy's damnation, though. I don't even think he knows that they. Yep, here it comes. Well, he saw one in his graveyard. Okay. You can ghost quarter non basics? Or you can ghost quarter basics? Yeah, man. Dude, that card is sick. So sick. That's insane. Just retarget lane. It's just. It's holy smokes. Holy smokes has been announced. It's a good card. I don't know that hitting basics is really where you want to be with it, but considering they can search for a basic. There are many decks in standard that, that you would, you know, just get, get the basic and they would have no other basics left behind it. 
In modern, you mean? Modern, yeah, modern. You're right. Sure. Yeah, there's uh, quite a few. But, I mean, you're also taking a tempo hit. Like, you're spending your land drop to take out theirs. Right. Liliana and Terminate in hand. Okay. He's got all the man. He can play all of these. You can play Liliana, but he doesn't want to plus it because he's got the Terminate. So you just kind of sit on it, I guess? You can kind of protect it from this uh, Shambling event with the Terminate as well. Yep. He's just drawing. And I he draws a heater. Is that the fourth ghost quarter? Is that what that was? No, he drew uh, Lingering Souls, I believe. Oh, man, he's going to let it linger, I think. Yep. Not this turn, he's not. All right, Lily. Yeah, so this is this is gonna be an interesting one. It's Liliana versus the world. Yeah, let it linger. Billy's definitely got control here. Concur. I still like Nile Spellbomb off the top. Bob. Bob will do some work. Yeah. Yeah, Kyle's got a, a nice, beefy life total. Can... Well, Liliana's going to slowly tick down one at a time with these... these spirits. That's fine. Like, it's not really doing anything else. Even if you do get to ult it, you'd, what, get a kill two lands of your choice? Basically? Right, that are coming back. Okay. Oh. Let's see what we draw off the top. Another Bob. Oh, it's a Bob Fest. All right. All right. Let's see if we. I wonder if I wonder if Kyle is like considered running Billy out of cards. <laughs> I don't know if he has anything he can do to run Billy out of cards. Other well, than well, just playing. Yeah, I mean, you just if Billy just wants to get life from the loan back a gajillion times. At some point, he's going to get, like, a Hoken, like here, or Flashback, yeah. a Lingering Souls. Another Bob bites the dust. You gotta yeah. think that Kyle drew something green. Yeah, I just don't see how Kyle wins this match short of a uh, heavy Nile spell bomb in his in his deck. Right. Yeah, he definitely needs some way to interact. Right. Down to eleven. What do you guys think of this deck in the chat? Do you want to see more Billy on camera? No more Billy, please. No more Billy, please? This is boring you? Uh, no, not really. It's just a... Uh... It's highly repetitious. Sure. I think it's an interesting deck. And it's fun to watch, like, once in a while. But to repeatedly watch it is pretty rough. Yeah. Billy talking about his worm harvest that he was wanted to cast. Yeah, I... Love me a good worm harvest. I love me a good life from the loam, but we're gonna try and get you something a little more interactive next round. Maybe, maybe.